Tonight on EWTN Live, we'll find out how a Catholic media organization that gave 1950s teen idol James Dean, as well as Star Wars producer and director George Lucas, their first film credits. And it is still going strong at 68 years after its founding, trying to infuse family entertainment with Christian values. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packle and welcome to EWTN Live, where we bring you guests from all over the world. Before we get to that, I want to mention that today is the Feast of St. Martin of Tours. He was ordered by his dad to join the Roman army at age 15, but he had already begun a process of conversion to the faith and he realized that he needed to leave behind the army and go off to live a Christian life, which he did. He became a monk at the direction of St. Hilary of Poitiers, who taught him clear, strong teaching on the Trinity and the divinity of Christ. And he also went off as a monk, as a monk at Ligouge in order to get to know Christ more intimately. He needed to pull away from his culture, which in the time he was born in 316, the Roman Empire was getting ready to totter. And before he died, already the barbarians were invading the empire. And his ministry of getting people to come to know Christ, leave paganism, leave the Arian heresy, and come to know the authentic Christ it was so powerful that he became one of the most popular saints in all of France to this day. And in fact, uh, it, the French made a very important note that the First World War ended on his feast day. His shrine is still in France, even though the French revolutionaries destroyed it. His shrine is still there, the, the church where it was, his tomb was, used to be. And they revived their own faith when they came to peace. And we still celebrate this 11th day of the 11th month and the 11th minute, in fact, when the First World War ended. And we have Veterans Day celebrated in this country and in other countries. The oldest and largest Veterans Day parade is right here in Birmingham, Alabama. The first Veterans Day parade took place in 1947 and it drew today about 80,000 people. It's a huge thing. They always try to get the oldest uh, vet who's able to attend to be the marshal of the parade. So it's a great way to remember those who sacrifice so much. We need to pray especially for our soldiers today. I want to just mention this. 22 veterans from the Afghanistan and Iraq wars commit suicide every day. 22 is the average per day. Something is deeply wrong and we need to love them and support them and pray for them. Uh, I, don't, I don't have much insight into it. Other people do that. but we can pray for them. And that's very, very important, given all that they've suffered and their families have suffered, uh, and then they continue suffering afterwards. All right, today though we have a guest who very much follows in a path laid down by his predecessor, the servant of God, Father Patrick Payton, 
who through his wonderful family theater productions harnessed the talents of actors like Jimmy Stewart, James Cagney, Grace Kelly, Shirley Temple, Raymond Burr, and many others to share a message of faith and hope through film, television, and radio. Today, the efforts to share the love of Christ continue with modern Hollywood stars like Martin Sheen, Jim Caviezel, Gary Oldman, and Eduardo Verastegui, among many others who are Catholics living out their faith and working in Hollywood. So here to tell us more about how Jesus Christ is at work in Hollywood, please welcome the National Director of Family Theater Productions, Father David Guffey. Father you. Guffey, Father welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. welcome. Thank you. So good to have you here. Good to be here at EWTN. Thank you for uh, joining us. Um, a lot of us are uh, aware of the phrase, the family that prays together stays together. But most people don't know that it came from? Family Theater Productions and Father Patrick Payton. Exactly. Payton had a radio show that had just been started with the Mutual Broadcasting Network, which was the third largest network at the time. Uh, Peyton had come out from Albany, New York, where he had a small radio ministry, but he knew that if he wanted to really spread the message about family prayer, he needed to go national. So someone gave him a ticket to Hollywood on a train, and when he got to Hollywood, he just started meeting Pat. He went right to the bishop and got the archbishop's approval, then meet, met pastors, and through pastors met stars, and pretty quick, within six months, he had a national radio show started that was a weekly drama that featured a major star and was taped out in Hollywood, uh, recorded live actually out mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Yeah, and it's, and this is, uh, by the way, just so folks understand, uh, he was not a diocesan priest, was he? No, he's, uh, we, he and I both belonged to the Congregation of Holy Cross, a religious right. priest. Right, right. He had, he had come over from Ireland, met Holy Cross priests at a parish mission, did his seminary work at Notre Dame, and then shortly after he was ordained, he was assigned to a, a high school in Albany, New York as a chaplain, but really quickly, soon after his ordination, really even before, he started the work promoting the rosary, and he promoted the rosary because he really believed that the ros family prayer would keep families together. And, and that was something that came out of his own personal experience of his family. Absolutely, grew up very poor in the northern part of Ireland. Uh, he was one of nine children very poor, but every night they gathered and they prayed the rosary together and that prayer held them together through very difficult times and even kept a, a bond of uh, togetherness when the, several of the children immigrated to the United States mm -hmm. and spread throughout all of Ireland. Mm -hmm. And so this, you know, coming from his own experience that poverty was not as big a burden as would have been the absence of meaning for family. For right. them, it was coming to our Lord through Our Lady, using the rosary to meditate on the mysteries, and praying together was more important than just having stuff. Absolutely, and it, and it was the la Our Lady that supported them and sustained them in their hard work, that kept them together and kept them faithful to Jesus Christ in the church in very difficult times. And, and I think that that shows up in the fact that he didn't say, uh, like uh, he didn't use a line out of the movies like Scarlett O'Hara, I will never be hungry again. No, yeah. It was rather he chose religious life as a way to say, look, I'm not looking for riches, I'm looking to serve God. That's right. That's, that's one of the things that's very important about him. And in fact, he, he would look back nostalgically on his family experience as almost idyllic, even though they were quite poor because of the closeness he felt. And he wanted that for all families. Mm -hmm. He wanted families to be strong. And, and already in 1940, he could see that the family was under a, lot, was a great deal of pressure mm -hmm. and with all kinds of influences that were going to tear the family apart. And you know, he was in some ways prophetic because in the 1940s, 1950s, family was doing better. Already divorce was on the increase. Right. Hollywood was a place where divorce was normal. 
-hmm. and typical affairs. You see in some of the old movies from the early 30s that, you know, before the, the, the decency board got into place, that the, the idea of playing around and having affairs, and that was themes in the movies already. Sure. And being set up as, a, oh, this is the way cool rich people live right. in these movies. He could see that if we didn't change, worse would be coming. And that's why he wanted to create family media, uh, shows that a whole families could sit and listen to together, mm -hmm. that they could be entertained, but they also could hear the values that were most important to them reflected, mm -hmm. uh, be inspired. And that's why the radio show lasted, I think, as long as it did, 1948 to, to 1968, uh, a weekly show on the radio. And that's, he, he, in one sense, he started a radio, a national radio show just as radio was about to lose its place right. as number one medium of entertainment in the country. A new critter called television was just getting started. Sure. And he got into television in the early years of television. The, his first television special was in 1948, and it was with uh, Bing Crosby and Ann Blythe. Mm -hmm. And he had... A, Who was a well-known actress. Yeah, she, went, actress she, she got it nominated for an Academy Award that year mm -hmm. uh, for Mildred Pierce. Uh, so she, you know, these they were top stars. Uh, some studio executive lent him a studio that wasn't being used, and they shot a little thing called Road to Peace, which was a reflection on family prayer. They sang a couple songs, and it was a, a lovely little piece. I, EWTN still plays it. Yeah, yeah. And he also did, we, we got a little clip from those early days, one of James Dean and Jeannie Cagney, James Cagney's sister. Right. Uh, they were starring in a, a piece called Hill Number One, about the life of Christ. And let's take a little quick look at that clip. Who is it? Mary Magdalene. What is it, Mary? What is it? What has frightened you? Peter, the tomb is empty. What? The stone has been rolled back and the body is gone. They have taken him away, and I know not where. Where are the others? In the garden. Where are you going? Back to the tomb. Come, John. We must see what has happened. He is risen, John. This is the veil that was wrapped around his sacred head. Yet I do not understand. He will enlighten us, Peter. Come, we must spread these good tidings quickly. Rejoice, Claudia, rejoice. He is risen. Christ is risen. Sir Andrew, rejoice. He has risen as he promised. He has risen, and I have seen him. The soldiers say the one they crucified is risen. He's risen. I've just heard the news. The crucified one has come forth from the grave. He is risen. Yes. Rejoice, centurion. Christ has risen. You know, I'm much more accustomed to seeing James Dean in tremendous anguish, oh, you know, right. just tormented, because that was something that captured the mood of the mid-50s when sure. you did you know East of Eden and some of the others. But here, it's nice to see him actually saying something that's positive yeah. here. And, and he credits that, that role for really moving his career along. Um, there were some bigger stars in there uh, in that, that piece as well. And it's a re it, the premise of the, the film is that it's a retelling of the story of the resurrection. Uh, there's an army chaplain retelling the story. It's kind of fitting for Veterans Day. Right. And the, the army chaplain is Roddy McDowell. So a young Roddy, Roddy McDowell. McDowell. Yeah, so it's wow. got a lot of great stars in there. The great thing about being in uh, Los Angeles is it's where so many young people go to develop their careers. And over the years, we've had the opportunity to work with many people 
uh, sometimes people at the height of their career, but many times people that are just starting out. Mm -hmm. There was a young actor from Canada who had trained it with a Shakespearean company who came to Hollywood and did some work for us in the early 1960s. And then he got a series called Star Trek. It was William Shatner. Uh, Is that right? He did a series of, on the Psalms with, uh, with Father Peyton. Um, that's now edited into a show called The Search, which is... And I don't think William Shatner was Catholic. No, he's Jewish. He's Jewish, right? Yeah, he's Jewish. But he, he was able, you know, this was something that he got his start in this, you know, and doing a little Catholic television. Right, right. Uh, not many people know that. They think, you know, he and Spock were just getting started together. But that was, yeah, yeah the earliest start. And here's the thing, you know, Father Peyton didn't ask them if they were Catholic or not. No. And, and sometimes there would even be a star that had some rumors or that would be around them and they'd say, you're sure you want them? And he, Father Peyton would say, it'll be good for them. It'll right. be good for them. And you know what, we find the same thing today. Uh, we have two uh, short films that we've just released and you know, we, we like to get people that we know, we like to audition our friends, but we also want to get the best person for the part. Mm -hmm. But what we found is when they're on set, when they're interacting with people of faith, that um, it catches and it, it's, uh, people kind of begin to understand. And in the, one of the films that we, we shot, 40 Hours, that we'll talk about in a little bit, it was a wonderful experience filming it because the, the cast of young people got so close that um, I just saw the, the star of the show, Paulina Cirilla, Saria, and she's been meeting some of the cast members and going to mass mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And some of them that are, hadn't been going or uh, that are, uh, are not Catholic. Exactly, and, and this is you know, something um, too often people in Hollywood try to go outside their roles and let their own personal life be put out there as the banter of the day and almost the way you're supposed to live. And that's not a healthy thing. No. Whereas it's a better thing, whether you're acting in Shakespeare or acting in a religious film, to let the, the if it's a good piece of literature mm -hmm. that you're enacting, it should help to elevate you and that you become a better person as an actor rather than use your worst actions to bring down everybody else. Absolutely, and act. there are so many actors that are hungry for the kind of roles mm -hmm. that they can show their craft, show their, their art, but that are also uplifting for themselves. Like uh, one of the actors that had a very small role in Family Dinner said, I really like, love this film because I know I can watch it with my kids. Right. And uh, that's not, it's, not the, it's not always the case that that's possible or that they have to make a difficult choice. Will they or won't they take the part? See, that's, that's one of the things, and it, I, I keep hearing about different groups that are in Hollywood and the environs yeah. that are Catholic groups that are trying to support each other in their craft, because it really is difficult work, yes. and it takes great skill to be an actor. It's not playing as such, but it's something that's very important position. But they want to do this to give glory to God and build up the human, the human dignity. You've come across these people? Oh, absolutely, and, and not only actors, but producers and writers and camera people. Uh, they would really love to be making things for the Lord. They'd really be love, love to make things uh, that they can be proud of to show their families it will be entertaining. And they are gathering in groups. We have a, at Family Theater Productions, we have a, a small outreach to Hollywood uh, where we gather people into small groups. Um, it, tonight is one of them. As a matter of fact, I'm missing it to be here. We, have a, we had a holy hour tonight, a pasta dinner, and then we had a speaker come and talk about pitching your project. Uh, pitching is where you take an idea to right. a studio or a producer, hoping they'll be interested in partnering with you. So, mm -hmm. it, so it feeds their spirit, their body, and hopefully gives them a little something professionally that can be useful in, in furthering their career. See, this is one of the things that um, I, I'd like to bring out because I mentioned with St. Martin of Tours, 
that he needed to pull back from his corrupting culture. The Roman mm -hmm. culture was not only falling apart militarily and politically, but culturally, morally, it was just going down. Yeah. And you see, it's a theme of the saints, Augustine, Martin of Tours, St. Hilary, um, uh, St. Patrick, they all had to go away from that corruption and gain perspective on it from Christ. I like it that you're inviting these young people to do the same, right? to go with a holy hour and then try to get perspective from Christ and then perspective on how to act. And, and also it's a safe place where people don't have to be afraid about how other people are going to react to their piety, to their deepest beliefs. They can just be themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and there are a number of, uh, the, the good news is there's a number of groups. Some are parish based, some are professional organizations. Um, and they are groups that invite people to step away, support one another, and get that perspective that you need in order to keep going in a very difficult environment. And, um, you know, one of the examples uh, where you're not only giving them advice, but also op offering opp opportunities for them is in a production you did called Family Dinner. What was that about? Right. Family Dinner is a story of a high school girl. Um, that is, her name is uh, Christina. She's played by a wonderful Latina actress uh, who's named Paulina Soria. Mm -hmm. And this girl wants to date a, a guy in her high school and her father and mother say no. And they finally relent, but they have to meet him first. The problem is they're all so busy. Everybody in her family is so busy. Sh she has to kind of finagle things to get them to, to all come together. And in the course of the film, she kind of understands why they're busy, what they're doing and how much of the reason they're busy is because they're supporting her. Her father is working long hours for her. Her mother is involved mm -hmm. in things for her. So she comes to a new appreciation of her family through what she experiences. Let's take a look at a clip oh, from that. We have a clip from it. Hey everyone, this is Christina. Now we're ready to take it to the next level. Yes, definitely. Nana. How do you know if somebody loves you? That's why I said don't tell your parents. You know, why don't we just keep it between you and me? Were you really trying to lie to us? I'm very disappointed. This is so unlike you. I'm sorry. It's just, he's the first boy I've liked who likes me. We really hope you're right about Lucas. All right, I just wanted to get to know you better. I'm more worried about mom. Kitchen, now. Mom, dad. If you met Lucas, you'd like him, I swear. So let's have a family dinner together. All of us. This Friday. Real love puts someone else first. It gives everything and expects nothing in return. Dinner's ready. Now, how are you getting this film out for people to see besides a clip on my show? It's going to be playing on EWTN, and we also market to schools and churches. They're 28 minutes long, and this film... Uh, so it it's, fits the attention span of a lot of young people. Right, and if for a religious ed class or a catechism class, mm -hmm. you can show the film, have a discussion, play, uh, pray a decade of the rosary. And in the DVD package, there's a study guide with um, suggested questions that you might use for reflection or for classroom discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, religious ed teachers love them and they've been very popular uh, in schools and churches. And, oh, that's good, yeah. that's good. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if anybody wants to get these, you can get both Family Dinner and another one called 40 Hours, which are available at EWTN's religious catalog. Just go to EWTNRC.com, or you can call uh, uh, the 800 number in North America, which is 1-800-854 six three one six and these and other movies that y'all have yeah. uh, are available at our catalog so it's it's good to have this so that it's not only religious ed class that you're discussing this but in your family that's right 
It'd be yeah. great for a family movie night too, mm -hmm. for the same reasons. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's fun movies where you're just going there to be entertained, mm -hmm. but there's also movies that make us think, and there are a lot right. of really important ones on that. Right. And both films also embody one of the mysteries of the Rosary. Uh, Is that right? Yeah, Family Dinner uh, looks at the mystery of the Eucharist, the institution of the Eucharist. And the reflection questions would lead you to that. Mm -hmm. And then 40 Hours is the mystery of the resurrection of Christ. How so? Uh, what's going on in 40 Hours? 40 Hours is the story. It's the same actress, Polina Saria. Mm -hmm. By the way, Polina, the day we wrapped shooting on Family Dinner, she got signed as the Latina cover girl, a spokesman for Cover Girl. Oh. So you may have seen her face. She's got a huge YouTube Ooh. following. We think she's going to be a big star. She might be our next James Dean uh, cool. down the line. But yeah, I, I think somebody else might have to, I don't know, cover Girl Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, um, in the 40 Hours, she stars as a, a young girl who has to do 40 hours uh, in a, for a service project for school. Many kids have to do that now. Right. right. And she, she's procrastinated, and the only place left for her to go is a soup kitchen, where she goes reluctantly, think, thinking she'll stay in the background. She's kind of pushed and encouraged to interact with guests, and one of them is a homeless girl who she befriends, and later turns out the homeless girl has a lot of problems. And it's the story of how uh, Christina uh, tries to help her friend and really realizes the limits of that. Okay, let's take a quick look at the clip of that too. Hi, my name is Christina Roca. I have to complete 40 service hours for my social justice project. It's the soup kitchen on Grand Avenue. They'll pretty much take anybody. What we need are people who will interact with our guests out in the dining room. What? Excuse me, would you gentlemen like any more water? Who are you calling a gentleman? Cat. Christina. I'm a volunteer too. No, I got kicked out a long time ago. Kicked out? Do you know where Kat is? She's usually here by now. Look, how much do you know about her? Kat's done more than trespassing. Possession charges. What? Drugs. No, seriously, are you okay? Rough night. Look, I just wanted to show you that there can be help out there. Just back off! I'm just not some project you can do for extra credit. Be careful with her, okay? And until a person's ready to carry their cross, help from the outside isn't gonna do much good. You have to do something. There's only one person that can save her. And you're not him. I thought we were friends. We are friends. Yeah, Pop's found her. She's not breathing. She's barely got a pulse. Be careful. You could get hurt. You told me to interact with the people. Now you're afraid I'll get beat up. Worse. I'm afraid you'll get your heart broken. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. Yeah, that's 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 really you know already draws you in, you know, as you yeah. deal with these characters that are you know dealing with, you know, take she's taken you know Christina down to a new level each time, yeah. and it's, it's you know tough stuff. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, we're excited. Yeah, and she again, Pauline is really wonderful. Uh, when we cast her in the first film, Family Dinner, we were looking for somebody who was Latina. And she, she's got fairly white skin, and they said, can you do a Mexican accent? She broke into full Spanish. Her parents are both immigrants uh -huh. from Texas. Yeah. Yeah, so, so. Well, a lot of people from that republic move around the country. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it, this is something that um, I, I hear, I, I mean, I myself do this, and a lot of people, we, we decry what's happened to the media. Right. You know, and, and I, I just don't go to many movies as a result. Sure. You know, because um, in fact, sometimes I'm even concerned about what I see on television commercials. Sure. You know, I'm just trying to watch the news and I start yelling, Victoria, keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to know. So it's, it's something that, you know, and, and it's also the violence. There's a lot right. of violence and stuff. And it's very hopeful to see that there are a number of Catholics. And I think it's a very Catholic element to do this because we have a strong sense of sacraments and symbols that is so Catholic. There, there's a right. priest friend of mine did a series of about 15 books 
on authors who got put into film. Unwittingly, he didn't even think that he's a priest, mm -hmm. but it turned out all of them were Catholic. You know, that they, because they had a sacramental sense. Right. Oh, it's huge. The Catholic understanding of art, we have a whole tradition of how to use art to tell story. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every one of the, the images on your set is really a story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, being told in another medium. Yeah, people were yeah. asking about some of the saints in the pictures here that have been here for years, and just to get to know a little bit about them. Right. Again, that's that's what we do, but to use, like Father Peyton did, right. he used radio, he used film, he used television. Right. You know, and this is what all of us need to do so that, like here at EW10, we tend to be pretty much a teaching network, but also to offer solid entertainment and visual. This is something we want to see grow. And I know the other thing that, uh, one of the other things that y you do, you do on your show and I've heard other shows is recommending good media to people. When mm -hmm. you go, a good yes. movie comes out, you recommend it. Yep. And, and I really encourage people, Absolutely. if you want good media, choose good media. You know, watch it, go to see it when it's in the theater. And uh, here's a tip that's really important. If you find a film and you hear about a film on EWTN or from some reviewer that you trust, go to see it opening weekend. In Hollywood, opening weekend really is important. That's, that's key. And so how much it makes over 100 weeks doesn't matter or won't matter as much as if it really brought in people opening weekend. Mm -hmm. So go opening weekend. The other thing is affirm what you like. Uh, we're, we can get in the habit of, of writing letters about things we don't like, and that's important. But if you see something on a show that you like, uh, for example, people tell me they really like a show called Blue Bloods. They often will pray the grace before meals. Right. They talk That's about right. going to mass. We'll write the studio. Let them know. Let them know that you like it. There's an audience for it. And then the other thing is recommend it. So if you find a good movie or one of the people in your audience finds a good movie. Or a good television show. Or a good show. TV show. Recommend it so that you can help others make good choices. And the better choices people make, the better media we'll have. We're going to take a break on that note. Come back in a couple minutes and get some of your questions and your comments as well as those of our studio audience. So please stay with us. after old video games. I think that would be best, like... <laughs> Attention passengers, this is your pilot speaking. We're about 40,000 feet up. Thing. I want to thank you for flying Donkey Kong Airlines. <laughs> Feel free to loosen your seat belts and roam about the cabin and if you happen to see a barrel rolling down the middle of the aisle, well, feel free to just jump over it. <laughs> So now, when really great things happen to me in my life, I often attribute that to the 200 sisters who were praying for me. And when bad things happen, I think, well, one of them just didn't pray hard enough. <laughs> I really like going to Costco. I really like going to Costco, guys. Enjoy that. I don't care. You know why? Because they got free samples. Yep. That's my diet. You with me, man? You're on the same. Yep. Love it, dude. I got looking for them. You know what I mean? What's that? Yep. Jelly beans. Come on. Tomato juice. Tide cleaner. Let's get freaky. You see these ladies are embarrassed. Like, what is that? Should I try this? What is that? What is this? Should I try this? I'm not sure. Should I try this? It's a cracker in a cup, lady. You know what it is. Weird. 
here's something fun. Next time somebody calls you and it's the wrong number, here's what you do. They ask you for someone who isn't there, you ask them for someone who isn't there. <laughs> so like, is Bill there? Like, no, is Todd over there? <laughs> The search continues, huh? All right, <laughs>
I'll give you an example. 10 years ago, I heard a woman writer talk, and she was a writer for a major TV show at the time. It was a one-hour drama on CBS. Mm -hmm. And she had written into the script that they would pray grace before meals. And she didn't know if the actress who starred in the show would want to do that. And when it came time to shoot the episode, it was cut. And so she went to the actress and said, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't offend you, but it seemed like it would fit the scene. And the actress said, well, I didn't, I didn't ask for it to be cut. So the writer went to the producer and she, she said to the producer, well, well, this scene was cut, or the, you know, these words were cut, mm -hmm. why? He said, well, they were, they were praying before meals. And she said, yeah. And he said, well, no one does that. You know, his perception was, mm -hmm. no one does that. Right. So right. why would you do that? I think there's, there, very slowly, there's some people in Hollywood, even if they're not people of faith, they're starting to understand that people do do that. And that it'd be good if people did it more. And, and you, you saw that in the controversy that was caused by the television series Duck Dynasty. Right, That they exactly. tried to tell them, tell the Robinsons, you can't pray. And they had the attitude, we're already rich. We sell <laughs> duck calls. Right. And we have enough money from that. And if you don't let us pray, we don't do the show. Right. And it was one of the biggest shows on that network. That's right. And so they realized, okay. And the, the show was doing great, but that was, they prayed the way they prayed. Right. And I, I, I think you know, in terms of question two, I look back on how Hollywood goes back and forth. Again, in the 40s and 30s, there were, the, the, a lot of the studios were run by Jewish owners but they were always respectful of all religions. They were, they were. Always. And it's only in the 60s that you start to see that they're kind of responding to the culture, but they're also pushing the culture away from religion by mocking religion and then making religious people look absurd and then evil. Right. You see a progression right. in, in the movies. Great, uh, I don't know if you know the, the the thing by um, Michael Medved, oh. uh, also a Jewish commentator. Right. But he did a, a video, Hollywood versus Catholicism, mm -hmm. because he has respect. And he, he, he goes through that. So we have to push back and let them know, no, this is not reality. It's not reality. And, and you see small signs that they're getting it. And, and, and we should celebrate those and affirm those and then the people will get it that there's more of us out there's more of us out here who for whom that's part of our life it's an important part of our life exactly and it should be included in the, the media that we watch exactly we have ruth on the line hello ruth where are you from from nebraska oh great uh and what is your question i was wondering um like us um catholics there is so much violence on tv I was wondering how we as Catholics can talk, maybe talk to somebody, get some of those programs off the TV and get more and more religious programs on TV? Sure, that's a great question. A couple of things. One is write the studios, write the producers and let them know. And it's good if you can be specific. So rather than saying, oh, the whole show is terrible, saying, when it has this element, when they do this, when they do this, it's offensive or it makes me not want to watch the show. So, and it, the other thing about writing them directly, and you can get, you can Google now, you can get the information off the internet, so it's fairly easy to get it, mm -hmm. is you're not giving publicity to the show. If you put something on your Facebook page, if you, you know, start a petition or a letter, letter writing campaign, ironically, in some ways, you're almost giving them press mm -hmm. but if you you know go directly to the producer and then the other thing is affirm what you can you know if, if there's a if the bad show comes on at eight o'clock on a wednesday night uh watch this show and affirm it or uh watch another show on another network um and and affirm it uh, you can you can change it by not watching it if it's really bad and offensive, write the, uh, the sponsors. The, 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 the people who do the commercials for those shows, they're also very attentive. And there's been some pretty famous cases where sponsors have withdrawn from shows because the audience reacts in the way that right. it does. But right. the biggest thing is affirm the good. The more that you affirm the things that you like, the things that have elements that you appreciate, 
the more of it that will get made. I mean, that's the way anybody is. Yeah. You know? um, and, and I think, too, to help remind people in the media that in the old days, there were murders in movies, but you never saw blood spurting out. It wasn't right. gory. It would be a shadow that somebody gets shot and collapses. Right. But you're not being forced to w glorify the violence of the act. Right. And in a, in a society where we have so many people being killed, you know, 400 people already in Chicago this year. Yeah. And uh, we say, let's tone that down. The idea that it has no impact is, is to, in my mind, speaking with a double, two sides of your mouth, because you spend 30, a lot of money for 30 seconds to influence my decision on what I buy. Absolutely. But then the half hour program has no effect on whether I think about violence or sexual things out of context and so on. Come on, we're not stupid. Right. Let's so, so respond to it. When I make the films that we made, I have a, st a story I want to tell, but I also have in my, the back of my head something that I want to say to the audience that I hope they'll get from it. Every filmmaker or every producer of a TV show is that way. They have something that they want you to think, feel, and do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should become conscious about that. Like, what are they trying to get me to feel by watching the show? What are they get me, uh, trying to get me to think? Mm -hmm. And so we have to be conscious about how we take in media, right. but also mm -hmm. support the things that uh, uh, make you feel the way that are honorable and noble, think the things that are good and true, and behave in ways that are just and righteous. Exactly. I have a question from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Cincinnati, Ohio. Great to have you here. And what is your question? Well, it's not exactly a question, it's a comment. I'm going to tell you that um, your TV productions, your movies, um, particularly the movie Woodlawn, mm -hmm. had a real good effect. Um, my parish, St. Gertrude in Madeira, Cincinnati, the whole football team, somehow the coach got wind of it, and he took his whole team to see it. And um, I heard that there were some other coaches that did the same thing, and, and I really thought that was really cool. I saw the movie myself. I tried to get someone to go with me, and um, it was great. I enjoyed it. I'm not into football, but I could see the value of it, and I thought, hey, this is a movie young kids need to see. Yeah. So yeah. I, I went, and lo and behold, uh, I found out that the whole team went, and I was just thrilled. Yeah, that, that was a movie that we, uh, it's about Birmingham, Alabama, right. and a real situation of, you know, uh, when integration of the schools through busing was brought in and, and the tensions that existed and Christ and prayer broke down. We want to promote that. Absolutely. And I, the two things I love about what she said, one is uh, the coach that got a whole team to go. That's a great way to influence. So if, you know, get, get your, a group from your parish, organize a class to go, organize a group of friends to go see a movie. And then just the idea that she went to see the movie because she was influenced by others to do so. Mm -hmm. um, we're get, more movies will get made like that if we continue to do that. Yeah, the, the Irwin brothers were the ones that produced that, mm -hmm. I believe. And, um, you know, there, there are other fine movies. Not all of them are Catholic, but no. it, you know, there, there's, there are good movies that you can take your family to. Right. <laughs> family, take yourself to. <laughs> you know. yeah. Young man, where are you from? Ben, Ohio. Good to have you. And what is your question? Have you ever been to, like, like oh. Hollywood, or met the producers or direct directors. All right, Father, don't look to me because I haven't. But I Father? work right in the middle of Hollywood. So uh, you not you just haven't just been there. You work. Yeah, there. my office is actually in Hollywood, and I'll tell you a story that and uh, this true story. When I first started working at Family Theater, I'd go to the grocery store two blocks away to get lunch, and this happened three times in the first six months I was there. The first time it happened, I was standing in line, and this woman behind me who had pink spiked hair. She was staring at me, I, I was dressed like I am now, and she said, may I ask you a question? I said, sure. She said, are you a real priest? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I am. I, I try to be, and she yeah. said, you're the first one I've ever met in person. 
Is that right? And then another time I was standing at a McDonald's and this guy comes up to me and says, uh, so did you get the part? I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, you really got dolled up for the audition. He said, I, I, I auditioned too, but I didn't put on the outfit. And I looked confused and I said, I said, I'm a priest. He said, you're a real priest? <laughs> and I thought I was auditioning for something. But, uh, but no, occasionally and, I... And my line to them would be, you know, there's more of us if you come inside the <laughs> church and don't just drive past <laughs> Next time, I'm going to remember that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that's, uh, in Chicago, if you're not a wise guy, they kill you. Yeah, so I, you, right. you just grow up yeah. thinking like a wise guy. And in the parish that I, the parishes that I assist in too, I see a lot of people in the industry, and they're writers and they're directors, and some really lovely people. Yeah. yeah. You have another question, sir. Where are you from? Lebanon, Ohio. Lebanon, Ohio. Great. And what is your question? I would like to know if you're like shooting this video or film for a certain age group, or or, or just in general. Yeah, just. Okay. Sure. Do you aim at a particular age group, or is it just? We yeah. try to, we, all of our, the, the, this series of films that we're doing has teenage protagonists, but they're films that the whole family could watch. Probably they would skew from uh, middle school up, um, mm -hmm. would find it interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if little, tiny little kids would right. find it very interesting, but middle school up. And so that's one of the things that is important, because this question is a very important question. You know, not everything, not everybody wants to watch, you know, cartoons for small children mm -hmm. that are teaching them something uh, though sometimes they do make kids shows with jokes that you have to be an adult to get because it's so clever I mean I remember Rocky and his friends you know Bullwinkle Bullwinkle, and all yeah. that that there were all sorts of you know there's just funny stuff that I got as a kid I've watched some of that <laughs> later on and it's sure. still funny, but I understand more of, you know, the, the, the Cold War stuff that was going on there. Right. So you can mix it, but you do aim it. You do, and it's, a, it's an important question too because so much media now is niche media, is created for niches. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and really they create media with the idea that older people will watch these shows, teenagers will watch these shows, children will watch these shows, they even have their own cable networks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and what what I really what we really hope for is for families watching media together because when you discuss, when you watch it together, you see how each other react, and and uh, God bless you if you can have a little discussion around it. Right. It makes it even more meaningful. Right. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about the UCLA study they did on marriage enrichment. No. The um, UCLA did a study. They were concerned about marriages failing in the first five years. So they had one, uh, one st uh, uh, t group that did nothing. The second group did a series of workshops with the counselor and, and l workshops about anger management and time management. The third group, all they did was twice a year pick a movie from a list and have a 45 minute discussion with their spouse based on some questions. The divorce rate for the groups that just watched the movie together and discussed it was half of the of the other groups. <laughs> so just the power of just watching something and have a thoughtful discussion about it. It's really amazing. It reminds me of uh, what the one of the reasons that Freudian psychology sort of went collapsed is they did a, a, the same thing. Had one group with the same disorders that would get Freudian therapy for three years and another group that they left alone. The ones they left alone did just a little bit better, not much, but just a little bit better than the ones that went through three years of therapy. <laughs> and people said, oh, maybe this doesn't work so well. Yeah. But here, you know, anger management and right. making a show about that, there's a right. show with that name and all, it, it's doing stuff together. Matter of fact, one of the most important things that uh, helps keep families together is to go camping together. Oh, yeah. That is, that, that's an, uh, there are other studies that I've seen that families that camp stay together and have less problems and less divorce rate than people that don't. Right. Very interesting thing. And if they camp together and pray together, oh my gosh, they got it all. Oh, I've, <laughs> I've gone out and done that with parish groups. It's, it really is a great thing. want to just let you know, family theater productions can be uh, looked at at family theater 
dot org, and uh, I don't know the area code. Was it three, three two, two three three two three eight seven four six six three three. And if you want information on Father Peyton's cause for getting him beatified, it's fatherpeyton.org, who came up with the family that prays together, stays, stays together. together. Father, thank you. Thank Please you so much. join me in giving a blessing. Sure. Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we can not only have Father join us on this program, but also present these uh, films that he's done and so many other things only because this network is brought to you by you. That's how Mother Angelica asked us to do it. So we ask you to please keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill. And we will try to pay all of our bills too. God bless you and thank you.